Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and so far in this NPC series, we've got our NPC set up with a bunch of different moving patterns, from patrolling to wandering around. However, he doesn't actually do a whole lot else. So in the next few videos, we're going to get him set up with a complex dialogue system. Here we're going to use scriptable objects to allow for branching dialogue paths. We'll also have special dialogue unlocks for when you've collected specific items or visited special areas in the map. That's where we're headed in the next few videos. In this one specifically though, we're just going to get our UI set up so that we're ready to move on with the rest. Alright, let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to want to do is add our dialog canvas. You can right click in the hierarchy, go to UI and add a canvas. Let's call this one dialog canvas. And then let's just click on that canvas, head over to our canvas scaler. We're going to make it scale with screen size. If we click in our game view, you can see that I'm in full HD mode, 1920 by 1080. So we'll want to use those numbers to make sure that we're consistent. The one other thing that we want to do on this canvas is just add a canvas group. This just gives us control over any children objects, and I'll show you how this works a little bit more later on. But for now, we'll just unclick interactable and blocking raycasts and leave the alpha to full. All right, now we can actually start building this thing. So let's right click on the canvas. We're going to add a UI image here. Remember, this is going to be where our actor name is going to go. And specifically, this is going to be the actor name box. You can set your box up on the top or bottom of the screen. I'm going to use the bottom just simply because in the rest of the series, we put a lot of UI up at the top, and I don't want to cover that up during dialogue. All right, at this point, you can just open up your Rect Transform. I'm going to set mine at about 600 by 150, as that gives me a nice amount of space. And here, when I click on my source image, I'm going to add the button blue three slides. You can use any image you want for this box, but if you want to know what I'm using from the Tiny Swords pack, I'll show you as we go. At this point, I'm just going to make it so it does not block raycasts. I'm also going to be slicing this one. Slicing is just a way to keep it from distorting when you drag an image out extra wide or extra tall. And you'll see that mine isn't currently set up, so I'll show you how to do this. We can click on the button blue three slides to get to the actual asset. Here, I've been using 64 pixels per unit for the entire project, so I'm going to set that, though it won't actually make much difference here. While we're here, I'm just going to set this to point no filter, which will get rid of blurriness. And if you're noticing any discoloration, choosing a 32-bit format should clear that up. Now we can head into our sprite editor, and the way we slice this is just by taking our green boxes here on the outside and pulling them in so that anything we want to preserve, in this case our box, and I'm actually going to also preserve kind of this faded look around the outside, and the inside is actually going to be what gets stretched. All right, with that done, you can see already that we've got a nice clean looking cut on this box. Now I want mine to be a little chunkier than that, so I'm actually going to just set it to 0.7 pixels per unit so that it matches my other UI elements. At this point, I want to add some text, so we'll go to UI, add Text Mesh Pro, and here we'll just call this one Name Text. If you've not yet imported the Text Mesh Pro package, you can go to Window, Package Manager. And in here, just make sure that you are looking at the Unity registry, not packages already in your project. You can type in Text Mesh Pro then, and you should be able to see it. Just click Install. All right, with that done, we can go ahead and set this up. You can make it look however you like, but I'm just going to put in Bob the NPC as my text here. Let's go ahead and expand this. I'm doing this by pushing Option on Mac or Alt on PC. And then you just have to set your borders so that it doesn't overflow into the outline of the box. I'm using the bangers font, setting it to size of 72. And actually I'm using a material preset of drop shadow. You should have that set up already, but if you don't, all that is is I've just saved the settings that I have down below here. So you can see on face that by changing dilate, you can make it larger or smaller. You can also change the outline size and color and play around with underlay, which is just what gives it this nice shadowy look. All right, so next up, let's add our dialog box. So I'm going to right click on the dialog canvas, go to UI image, and we'll call this one dialog box. And it's just going to stretch it out roughly where I want it to appear down in the bottom corner here. I'm going to go with about 1550 by 575, which is quite large. So feel free to make yours smaller if you don't like that. And then I'm using banner horizontal. I've already sliced mine. So if you haven't done that, you'll need to repeat the steps that we did with our last image. And I'm just going to set our pixels per unit to 0.5, which is slightly less chunky and leaves a little more room for the actual text. I'm just going to kind of move that into place for now and make sure to rename it as dialog box. Once again, I'll right click, go to UI and add text mesh pro. We can call this dialog text. And in the rec transform, we're once again going to hold option or alt on PC in order to expand it and then just bring our margins down so that the text fits nicely within the box. 
Once again, I'm using the bangers font, though this time I'm just gonna stick with the base material as I wanna actually make this one have black text. I'm just gonna print new text a whole bunch of times here so that I can see what it looks like to fill this with text. This is a large box that has room for four lines of dialogue, so again, feel free to make it smaller if you don't feel you need that much, but it does fill the space quite nicely now. If we head down, you can just see, again, what my settings are for face, where I'm working with no dilation, and a outline of about 0.3 white, and then I've also just got a slight underlay. With that done, we've got our dialog box finished, so we can close that up. Next up, we're gonna add a portrait box here. So I'm gonna add a UI image, and we'll just call this one portrait box. Here I'm gonna be using the button blue. Keep in mind, this is not the button blue three slides we used last time. So again, you'll have to slice this one if you've not done so already. I'm just gonna kind of put it in place here roughly, and then I'll fine tune that making it 450 by 450. Since my image portraits are square, I wanna make sure the box is as well. Here I'm going to slice it once again with 0.5 so that it matches my actor text. At this point, I'm just gonna move things a little bit to make them fit better, though we'll fine tune this more at the very end. Now next up, I wanna create a cool effect where my NPC's portrait comes outside of the box on two edges, but not on the others. So for this, we're gonna need a mask. So I'll just add a UI image here and set the alpha to zero so we don't actually see the square. The way this will be set up is that anything that shows up within this space will be visible and anything outside of it will be invisible. I'm gonna set my mask to about 500 by 500, though you can always resize it if that doesn't work. We'll rename this object to mask, and then I'm just gonna move it up to, and to the left here. The idea being that we wanna make sure the NPC doesn't show outside of the box on the bottom and on the right. At this point, we can close that up, add component, and here we're just gonna add a rect mask 2D, which is gonna be what does all the work for us. Now we can right click on the mask and make sure that we make our actual portrait a child of it. Here we'll use a UI image, here you can see that as I drag it, anytime it goes outside the box, you can't see it, which is what we're going for. I'm just gonna go ahead and add my object here. I'm gonna be using the pawn purple zero. I'll turn off raycast targeting, and then just in my rec transform, since he's quite small and has a lot of empty space around him, I'm actually gonna make him 1600 by 1600. Though again, feel free to resize however you like. You'll notice that we're getting a nice effect where the bottom and right of him are obscured and he overflows the box on the other edges. I might just move him down a tiny bit. We don't necessarily need to see his feet and I don't need his hair covering too much ground, but that gives us a nice effect right there. All right, the final component of our dialogue is going to be a choice box. So here I'm just going to add an empty game object to our dialogue canvas. I'll call this choices. For now, I'm just gonna kind of drag it roughly into place here at the bottom. We'll resize and move around a little bit later. Now here we're just gonna add a grid layout group and all this will do is take any buttons that we put on here and move them into a grid. I'm gonna go with a cell size of 450 by 150. This will nicely fit four buttons here. But if you want to have more buttons, you can just choose a smaller size. But I'm also gonna give them a spacing on the X of a negative 30, which will just keep them from having weird spacing between them. Again though, once you've added your buttons, you can play around with these numbers to get it looking just right. All right, next up we're gonna actually add the buttons that we're gonna be using. Here I'm just gonna put an image on for now. I'll call this one option but you'll notice that the center of the option button is going to the top corner of our box, which isn't quite the way we want this aligning. So we're just gonna custom pivot. So we'll give it a zero on the X and a one on the Y, and that'll just make it so that it fits really nicely within the box we've made it. I'm gonna match our actor name box here by using the button blue three slides and setting it with a pixels per unit of 0.7 here. I'm also gonna add a UI text mesh pro at this point, and then we'll do our usual text stuff. Let's rename this object to option text and make sure that we stretch it out so that it fills the box and then give it a nice margin. At that point, you can make your text look however you like. I'm gonna make mine sort of match my actor text there by using the bangers, size 56, and I'm gonna use that drop shadow effect once again. Keep in mind your actual option text will probably be more than just one word, so you wanna keep it small and have some empty space at this point. Now by using command D, we can just duplicate the options. Well, this 4 didn't quite fit for me. I just need to drag this out a tiny bit wider. And there we go, that fits pretty nicely. At this point, you can just sort of close this up. I'm gonna click all four and actually just move them using the move tool into the lower part of my screen, but kind of centered. That said, we've now got our UI fully set up so that in the next video, we can actually get this NPC talking. Hope to see you in that video. Until then though, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.